Hey guys, this is Gijs again and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a video about the ISPO, the winter ISPO of course, because it is January. Um, in the big holes behind me are products on display that will be in store in fall winter of 2021. So if you see something you like, you have to wait for a while. Um, in this video I will show you the products that I find interesting and I will also tell you the results of my visit to the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards and of course the ISPO Awards. So if you're interested in the new stuff for coming season in the coming winter, follow me inside. One of the cool things about the trade show is the new Garmin 6X Pro Solar. And of course, it is a Phoenix one. Um, the new thing about this one is the fact that it has got a watch face that is basically a solar panel, which makes it, of course, very energy efficient for the longer term. Um, and it also got a built-in European map. Um, and yes, it's got a ISPO award as well. Now, one thing I should remark is that Garmin is not the first one who does this because Casio has been doing this already for quite a long time. So this is a small boot and that's a big boot. It is the Aku Minima. And it is one of the boots that we actually awarded during the ISPO award meeting. Uh, yes, I know, this does not look like 100% outdoor like I do it. This is more like urban outdoor, urban office wear. But still, the good thing about this boot is that it is made of naturally tanned leather. So no chemicals, heavy metals and other stuff are used in this production. And also it is a very nice crafted boot. And what we predict, and we had one Italian guy in the jury, is that with, well, aging, this boot will even get more beautiful. Adam, you're a product specialist at Osprey. That's right. Um, the new pop bag, That's as I right, like yeah. to call them. <laughs> Tell me, what's, what's the difference between what's on the market and mm -hmm. why this one is, according to you, extremely well and well made? Absolutely, okay, so this is the new Solden Pro um, and we also have the Sopris Pro. So that's point number one about why our packs are some of the best on the market, is that we have made a men's and a women's specific fit on these ones. Okay. So that's not something that many of the competition can say, uh, and it's something which is really, really important. Yeah, because, because bodies yeah. differ, totally. weight yeah. differs. Yeah. All of that stuff, yeah. I mean, if you're spending 70% of your time or 80% of your time walking up a hill, it's really important to have a really, really yeah. comfortable fit, especially when this pack has got skis and boots and everything attached onto it. It's going to be pretty heavy. You want to make sure that this is really nice and uh, nice and well fitting. Okay. Um, now, what's the system inside of the backpack? Yeah. So this uses a pure Swiss technology, which is uh, made by a partner of ours called Alpride. Yeah. Alpride is a, um, a company that makes the electronic airbag systems and the electronic airbag system is a very very clever um, uh, technology which uses a thing called supercapacitors and supercapacitors are really really powerful electronic gates where basically they store up loads and loads of power yeah. and then a gate opens and all of the power wow. comes out all at once. So it's really a technology that's specifically made for airbag technology like this. Sounds a bit like um, ejection sheets and fire pilots. Yeah, kind of, yeah, definitely. So uh, James Bond the, stuff as well. Uh, totally, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> the big advantage of um, an electronic airbag system over a canister airbag system, which is the, the ones uh, are, that are usually on the market, yeah. um, is that a canister system, every time you fire it, it costs about 40 euros to recharge the system. Okay. Um, also, those canisters you can't go on aeroplanes with. You can't put them in um, in the you know the shipping. Um, it's really difficult to uh, to um, get them recharged because you have to go to a shop yeah. or to a, a specialist place. These ones, it's just a pair of AA batteries and a micro USB. That's Charge all. Charge it 20 minutes to half an hour with the micro USB, or 40 minutes to an hour with the with the double A's and then you're good to go again. So okay. it's super, super safe. Can you show me the inside or do we, do we have Absolutely. to pop it first? Yeah, let's show you the inside. It's okay. uh, easy to do. So, oh, there we go. Ah. So that was an in-between. So now we got the system here. Well done, thanks. So this is the all. Alpride system, um, this is the, uh, the engine of the pack. Okay, and stored away in this compartment here is the actual airbag. So the system here, um, it's, it's got the four super capacitors here, uh, which are charged by the micro USB and the AA batteries. 
Inside here there's a circuit board, uh, which is a very simple circuit board that has uh, basically a couple of features. It's got a diagnostic check to make sure that everything's running okay. Yeah. So it gives you some lights on the side that tells you if everything's okay. Um, it's got a power button and it's got a vent release. That's pretty much as easy as it gets. So it's very, very, very simple. On the bottom section here, um, okay, yeah, you have yeah, uh, basically uh, the, yeah. the, uh, the, the grate which covers the fan and you can see what this is a bit like one of those expensive Dyson yeah. vacuum cleaners. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is where it sucks in all of the air. Um, that powers in through this vent on the side. Here. Okay, yeah. So that vent here, that's where all of the air can be pulled through and really make sure that yeah, this is uh, yeah. this is great. So this is uh, this is snow repellent. So it makes sure that even in the you know big heavy powder days when you're out on those like really snowing heavily or there's loads of snow on the floor, you can suck in tons and tons of air and pulls it out and explodes it out into yeah. the uh, into the airbag itself. So very safe, very reliable, incredibly easy to use and easy to charge. Oh, this is sort of foamy webbing to protect it from exactly, whenever you yeah. rub it somewhere. So this requires, yeah. um, it, it, because this uh, this engine is the hard section, it requires a bit of padding from things like the um, you know the hard hardware and stuff that you've got uh, attached yeah. to the outside. We've perforated this to make it even lighter, and that's another thing that makes this pack so good is that even with an electronic system in here, this comes in at just 2.7 kilos. Okay. So really lightweight, um, but. Uh, the, the kind of the other kind of key aspect that we have on this pack is just how tough and durable it is. So the fabric on this front panel and across the, the white stripes through the grid section mm -hmm. on the outside is made of a really complicated material called ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. <laughs> so it's basically an incredibly tough fabric. Tough material. Totally, yeah. <laughs> It's, um, it's about 12 times yeah. the tensile strength of steel. Okay. So really, really, really strong. Ah. So. Sounds like Dyneema sort of. Very similar to yeah, Dyneema, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's that kind of... Uh, and if know, we really, talk about, really this is a 30 litre backpack. That's right. Um, yeah. Is that with or without the engine? So uh, the 30 litre backpack um, is, the, is the entire volume okay. of it. Uh, the, the engine probably takes up around about two and the airbag itself yeah. takes up about one. So in terms Still of space left. capacity, you've got plenty of space in there okay. for, uh, for nice. uh, you know, big days. Sweet. Okay. So final, um, there's plenty of features on this one for, that are great for skiers. You've got a helmet net tucked yeah. under here so you can attach your helmet onto the front. You've got a goggles pocket that sits down the side here so you can put your uh, goggles, yeah. snacks, that kind of stuff in. And then the final little pocket on the hip belt here so you've got a place for your, uh, you know, lip balm. And it's uh, got space for shovel, pro, peeps, that kind right, of stuff yeah. as well. Yeah, so okay. that comes in into this red pocket here. So you've got the red, red ah, color okay. that yeah. comes around here. That's where it is. Oh, shovel, yeah. shovel po sleeves. Um, Plenty of okay. So now I think it's time to pop one. Let's get this detonated, definitely. So <laughs> first thing we need to check is just a double check on the side that we've got a green flashing light. Yeah. Which it looks like we do. So would you like to put it on? Oh my god. Do I want this? <laughs> Maybe we should. Where is? That one goes like this. Great, so now it's done up. All we have to do is just release the trigger mechanism, which sits inside either shoulder. So depending on whether um, you're left-handed or right-handed, you can swap it. And then when you're good to go, give it a pull. Okay. And now I feel like I am going to fly! <laughs> Adam? There we go. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Ciao. <laughs> so the backpack that's on my back is the Gregory Targi. 45 liters. I'm reviewing it at the moment. But with me is Lars from Gregory. Um, Hi guys. And there is the new Targi Fast, fast Track. Track. What's the difference between the Fast Track and the Gregory that I'm testing at the moment? I think the most uh, important feature is, of course, the quick carry system, quick ca carry attach system. Um, no, yeah, that's important. Yeah. What is it? You're holding a pair of skis. Okay, I show it. You show it. Very easy. So it's very. You take the ski. You have a sling here. Yeah. You put it in here, and then you take <laughs> this nice strap here. You sling it around like this. And oops, it's attached to the back, and you just <laughs> go up the hill. Is this the first brand that does this? 
Uh, there was actually, there is um, a product which has the same function, but a totally different execution. And also um, we have a totally new hardware to make it really stable because we want to carry it for s Because this, this looks so clever to me, because it's one of the things that if you are a two skier, yeah. it's one of the things you hassle with the whole time. Um, Absolutely. And is the backpack in, well, it's different than this one as well on other features? Yeah, I think the biggest difference is obviously um, the lightweight motors. So if you want to strip down the pack, uh, you can reduce it by more than 500 grams. So suddenly you end up from uh, 1.2 something to uh, below 800 grams. And I think that's okay. fantastic. So you take off the top lid, you take certain things like this hip yeah. <laughs> features. So that's quite nice. And it, this makes the ski bag very universal. Now I almost regret it that we don't have so much snow in the Netherlands, let's say mountains, um, but I will definitely give that one a try later next year when we have snow. Thanks so much Lars. Thank you. Well done. With me is Hortense, she is product manager at TNF, um, and actually she's Dutch, so we can talk Dutch, but we won't of course on camera. Um, now tell me, I've been in the ISPO jury meeting, but not on apparel, what is the 50-50 jacket about? Yeah, so the 5050 jacket is our newest innovation for uh, this year. And it is a completely new approach to insulation. Okay. So we really wanted to make insulation more readable. And that's actually what you can see here pretty well. So we are actually... Um, and now we're talking about... It's on the outside, but this should be on the inside. This is on the inside. Yeah. For you to see it better, uh, we do it like this. So we have circular baffles with the down inside. Yeah. We are using a thousand uh, filled down uh, program. That's the highest quality. Highest of quality uh, that is that, So that it's is expensive. Existing. It is a little bit expensive, <laughs> but it is a great innovation and oh, definitely something new. We are pairing it with a fabric here in the middle, which is 100% nylon uh, ripstop, so yeah. definitely durable, but it as well has a high CFM rate. Now, what does this really mean is that the air can easily go in and out. So we're really striking the best balance. Air permittability, is that yes, how you call it? exactly. Yeah. So we're really striking the balance here between what that is given through yeah. the down, but at the same time, breathability because the air can go in and out. If we turn it inside out again or outside in, there you go. Because this is actually, it can be an outer layer. Yes. But it can also be a in between when you wear a hard shell over it. Absolutely. So this will work perfectly in combination with Future Light. Exactly, and that's really what we want to do. We want to have all these layers that work with each other. So if it's really cold, but not necessarily wet, you can wear it like this, no problem. Yeah. If it's a bit more wet or more colder with the wind, you can wear your future lights above it. Okay, well, thanks so much and yeah, congratulations with the ESPO Award Thank anyway. You. Thank okay, you thanks, much. well done. Okay, with me is Andre from Terex. You are the product geek, basically, about shoes. Um, one thing we should state, it's about the free hiker, cold. Um, and it's not about the W, this is the women's one, but this is actually the male version. Absolutely. Okay, tell me, what is new about this shoe? So, as you said, it's an iteration of our Free Hiker family, which we launched in 2019 for yeah. the first time. And now we have a winterized version of it. What's so cool about it is that it's insulated with a special membrane from Gore. So it's an insulated membrane from Gore-Tex. Makes the shoe completely waterproof yeah. and warm at the same time. The benefit as well is that with that Gore membrane, the shoe can be very sleek, so it's not so bulky, mm -hmm. not so heavy. It also makes the shoe very flexible. That's a huge benefit. And there are no laces. No laces, exactly. It's really nice. It's a <laughs> slip in boot, no laces, still great fit and performance at the same time. Now, if we go from a boot without laces to a boot with a special lace, yes. what are we talking about? Something behind this one? Exactly. We're talking about our gold award winner for this ISPO show. I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. It's the Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. It's the Agravic Pro. Yeah. And the uniqueness about the shoe is it's also a sleeve construction, so you have a waterproof zipper. It really closes up nicely at the ankle. It's more or less a shoe combined with a gaiter. Yeah. So no debris, nothing can fall in. But on regular shoes, you have to have the lacing underneath. And here you can still lace it and undo it from the outside. Still wearing gloves, still being in the outside, you know, you need to adjust it. Just yeah. pop it, click it, twist it, and that's it. And it's quite sort of 
very light. It's super so. light. Okay, thanks for the information so far. You're welcome. Okay. With me is Alex. He is from Terex, of course, but what is your job description actually? Hey, nice to meet you, nice for having me. My job description, I'm taking care of Terex apparel, of the technical part, Yeah. and I'm heading this department. Okay, what is this? It's a female jacket, it's available for men as well. Yeah. How is it called? It's actually our ice dye down hooded jacket, and it's a down jacket, as the name says already. It's super technical, super lightweight. It has a down insulation, it's 9010 down, with yeah. 800 filling power. Okay. But the most interesting part actually I would like to talk about with you. It's on the inside. It's actually on the inside, okay. right? Because this is how we do the baffling. This is a patented uh, technology. What you see here, we have chambers. They are a little bit bigger than the other ones. And then you then wear this jacket, then it's covering actually the seams. And the seams ah. are down jackets are actually the creating cold bridges. The cold bridges, yeah. And yeah. you know, in our tech lab, for example, we see it on the heat cameras and you see all these blue lines and these are protecting actually this one So they're, they're basically folding over the seams itself. Exactly. And That's it, clever. And we measure it also yeah. and it, uh, with this technology we are able to, let's say, to maintain 20% more heat inside in comparison to a normal down construction. Okay. And with this one we are also able to have so this is for Terex, the big winter news for 2021 fall winter. I mean, we have a lot of stuff in the, on the booth. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that, but it's one of our highlights as well, yeah. for sure. And uh, we are really happy and proud about it to have these kind of technologies in our way. Okay, thank you so much, Alex. All right, thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. At Bach, they did something very funny this year, and it is the Dr. Duffel. Now, as you can imagine, Dr. Duffel, what's in the name? Well, let me tell you. Doctor, it opens like a old-fashioned doctor suitcase. Now, what do we do? This is, of course, the big one. Now, it's like a matruska. So, we have the smaller one. And it goes on like this until we have the baby, Dr. Duffel. Bettina. I know you work at Faude, I know you've got something to do with uh, sustainability. What, what is actually your job description? I'm responsible for the quality and chemicals management and I'm also part of our CSR team, so I'm related to the project in the supply chain. Okay, now I've been speaking to my Dutch colleagues sort of earlier. Now tell me a little bit about the jacket. It's made out of hemp, yeah. which is a well, a plant-like thing that we have a lot in Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, but a little, a little bit different. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, the hemp is a, a natural fiber. Yeah. And uh, it has a, a lot of good properties, which we like to have. And now we combine this hemp with uh, a, um, a light wax cotton yeah. um, um, cover. So, you so no DWR coating? No, it's not That's DWR. It's a, it's a wax. Yeah. So it's water repellent uh, for a specific time, but it's not a waterproof jacket. But wax means it's sustainable as well? Yeah, it's paraffin. Okay. So from a toxicological point of view, uh, this is really a good choice. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know Faude by quite a long time by now as a very sustainable company. You're one of the leaders, um, to my opinion, in, in the market, in the outdoor retail. How much further is this going to go? I think at the moment we are running out of uh, fossils. Yeah. Uh, we, we are facing our climate uh, changes. No snow so in Munich? No snow in Munich, no snow at all, and no rain. That's, so it's yeah. getting more and more dry. And so there is a change of the climate, so we need to take care. And uh, so at Faudé, we are always uh, thinking, how can we get rid of the fossil? Yeah. Uh, the way far away from plastic back to more natural fibers. And it's quite complicated because the performance um, uh, level is a little bit different from synthetic materials yeah. and uh, natural fibers. But this is the first step to find new solutions uh, towards uh, sustainable materials. Now this is more like an urban outdoor jacket. Yeah. 
But are we going to see hemp as well into the real technical outdoor gear? Perhaps, we never know. That's, that's future <laughs> development and something that you will have to... We, we are in development, we are in contact with very good uh, suppliers which uh, have new technologies uh, with hemp. Yeah. And uh, we are also looking for other info, uh, um, new materials, for example, we... Um, developed a, a fleece based on tensile, tensile which yeah. is a cellulose fiber yeah. which is biodegradable which means tensile cellulose means basically it's, it's wood it's wood yeah and it's biodegradable in water and so you do not have the microplastic issue so which is a big problem this is a big problem now yeah. one of the of the things that i've been talking to a lot of people on this trade show is ddwr coatings um, some brands still use the not the eight, but the six version of it, um, which is long-lasting because it's a strong chain. You're not using a DWR in that way at all, as the comp as company. How do you manage to create a DWR coating that is lasting on a garment like the harmful carbon ones? It's really a hard work, and it needs a lot of testing and evaluation to find out which of this new alternative chemistry really fits to the material because we see a lot of different results depending on the, on the material on the yeah. structure of the material the color we use for the materials and so we have to we need to test and find out what is really the, the proper chemistry and the proper material and the processes so it's a lot of investigation a lot of evaluation yeah. Yeah. and testing unless uh, those materials are coming into the market. Now I know you give sometimes sustainability clinics at Faudé. Um, I would like to invite myself to one of them. So this is going to have a follow-up. Yeah. Thanks so much. Okay. Was it okay for you? Yeah, this is fine. We can talk for hours, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, you have to Thanks. come and join our Faudé um, no, she asked green already. <laughs> Gertjan, you are the guy, at least in Holland, behind Icebreak, and you made it quite huge in Europe. You were the first one to distribute it. Um, now we've got this award-winning Justin Bryce Icebreaker piece. Correct. What's the story behind this piece? The story is that we already, for um, starting the, the brand, we work with a natural fiber it's yeah. called Merino, from yeah. the Merino Sheep. <laughs> So we're fully focusing on this uh, sustainable product, um, but we are in a phase that climate is changing, we are in a phase that a lot is happening in the world, and we found a New York artist called Justin Bryce Guerrilla, uh, with his patents, taking yeah. care and looking after, um, yeah, to bring this uh, to an expression in, in apparel collection, yeah. we call this the JBG collection. It uh, contains different kinds of products, but the award winning is a base layer, yeah. which has the key feature that this is a pure merino 100% base layer with a natural dye process. This natural dye process means that we use less water than a normal dye, dye process. Which is about 80% which less? Is about 80% less. That's a lot. So there's a lot for the environment, a lot of uh, benefiting to this. And with this uh, nice pattern, which is a bit showing. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the warmth, the global warmth, uh, and the heating up of our of our Earth makes because, this a very interesting. Because the prospect. print, it is actually. We actually, uh, it's visualizing, uh, for example, the the melting atmosphere we have in Greenland. Okay, so, so it's the ice basically the retreating ice. the whole time, exactly. getting less and less and less and less. Yes. Okay, and now your colleagues just jumped on the train back to the Netherlands. Yes. Because that's a sustainable thing too. Absolutely. So we don't fly and we don't drive. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, with me is Jacob. You are from Kupilka. Kupilka, yeah. That's Kupilka. Right. You're a Finnish company. Yeah, we're Finnish you do company. sustainable stuff. Yep. They made me a couple of years ago for the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards a really nice big mug with my name on it and of course the logo of the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards. Now, you sent this one in for the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards this year, yep. where we just finished in Klein Wazeta. But you retreated it. Yeah, that's right. Because it was still too much of a prototype. Yeah, yeah. So I did not see this. This is the first time I see it. 
Jacob, explain this to me. Because yeah. it looks sweet, like all your yeah, products. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. But there is something on top of it that reminds me of something that we have in Holland. Okay. Um, on basically every gas or petrol station yeah. to put a lid on top of your cup, not yeah. to spill anything. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now it's yours. Okay, yeah. So basically, well, I can take it off and you can you can see the cup itself. I mean, this is ready, 100% ready. I've been using mine for like three months. Yeah. In cafes, in you know, in Finland, in, in Canada, in Hong Kong, and it's, it's, it's really nice. I, I really like using it and I've been getting some great feedback. But then this, we still have to work a little bit with, uh, and that's the reason we retreat it from the from the award. So that's the lid, um, and it's patent pending. So of course this is a prototype, so it will have color. Now it's without color, so it looks a bit yeah. plain. But it, you you can see the function. So so basically, uh, what's new about it? Why we we thought about patenting it? Okay. Is the function? So you can press it with your with your one hand, I don't know if you see in the camera, it closes completely. There are so, all little holes around here. Yeah, so and, there are holes going 360 around around the cup. And when I when I press it closed, it's 100% watertight. So okay. even when you have coffee or tea inside, you can put pour it put it like that, and nothing comes out. So you can put it in your pocket or in your backpack even. Just continue. You know, your doing journey. your business, and yeah. then when you have time, then you can pull it open with with your hand like that. It pops, pops open, and then then you can drink 360 from which which ever angle. So it's it's pretty neat, pretty innovative. I've never seen this before. This is totally different than what yeah. we have in the gas stations and on the train yeah, stations yeah, yeah. as well. Um, but now this is still, okay, it's a prototype like you explained. Yeah. So it's not 100% there yet. Yeah. When do you expect it to be on market? Uh, well, um, I'm, you know, we're definitely hoping uh, that we will be able to, to bring it on the market within this winter. Okay. But I, I would say definitely before summer. So okay, by, that's a good expectation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but but it's kind of like this that you like. We now we're testing the right materials with the, to have the right combination for the functionality. Everything worked perfectly, and you know you never know. We could have it by next month, or it could take two months. You know, you never know with these kind of things. One question: This is fifty percent wood or yeah. cellulose, yeah. and fifty percent. Polypropylene. Polypropylene. Yeah. Now you tell this is not the material that it is going to be in. What kind of material are you going to use? Uh, or is that the secret in the Well, pet? it's kind of like a secret, and it's well, it's not a secret, but like the, the the truth is that we're still testing the materials. We have to write, find the right combination, and of course, we are also thinking about the ecological side. Yeah. Because so that's we want what to make you are about. As ecological as possible, but at the same time, it has to function perfectly. Yeah. So we have to find okay. mid ground. Don't tell the material yet, then. Yeah. Thanks. Hi there. One of the new brands I came across here is Uphill Sports. And actually, we had one of their, or one pair of socks on the Scandinavian Award jury meeting. And they were not awarded, which is, of course, regrettable. but well, sometimes I am alone, and because this one actually, it's the first sock in the world that's been made out of a four-layer um, yarn fabric. Um, I know brands that do a two-layer yarn, I do know brands that do a three-layer yarn, and this is the first one with a four-layer yarn. Now, I will be reviewing this for the outerguru.com website, of course. So if you're interested in this sock and the four layers, follow me. I've been telling you about the Scandinavian Outer Awards already a few times that I am part of. And this is the place where we've got everything on display. Uh, not only the nominees, but of course also the winners. And I will take you to a couple of them. The overall winner of the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards is this piece by Aklima. Um, it's an overall, it's a one piece. And the nice thing is that it has a zip on the back. So when nature calls, you can do whatever you like. Uh, we've been testing this in the field and it really works. Um, Aklima is known for its webbing. It's a very open uh, woolen structure with a lot of elastic material in it. So it feels very comfortable in wearing, but also to the skin. 
because if it is wool, it is also nice um, humidity regulating. I've owned a few of these pieces, not the overall, of course, because this is new, but just the normal ones. And I wear it quite a lot. Um, the good thing about the Aclimas in this case, that of course, where the bum is, this is like not the webbing. It's a well reinforced piece. And the same thing is for the shoulders, for the elbows, and of course for the knees. So this is the overall winner of the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards. The hardware award went to this pack, the Nordic tent from USB. Um, and the good thing is, it is a pack that doesn't bounce around when we are trail running in the winter time or for example when you do some Nordic skiing. And look at the front, it is really a special one because it is like a big X and this is really a stable pack. The kids band Raima is the one who won basically two awards. They won the kids award with this beautiful waterproof winter jacket. Um, this one has got pockets and as you can see probably here, there is a little, well, sort of underneath pocket here. So that means that if you open the zip, um, nothing will fall out, which is in the case of children, of course, very handy. And the other one is this app. It's the Raima weather app. And it does tell you, in relation to the weather circumstances, how you should dress your kit. Um, and you can change into two activities. The other thing that I also do like about the Raima weather app is that they are, well, sort of giving you tips on activities that you can do together with your children and language wise um, what is very important it addresses children in a different language than it addresses the parents so this is really a well thought of app. The Trangia Teaspoon won the Hardware Accessories Award and yes it is a sort of a spork let's say a spoon and a fork in one item. Um, I like the looks of it and it feels really nice to the hands. It looks a bit military. Um, the spoon itself, it looks quite shallow if you look at it from the side, but it actually contains quite a lot of liquid. And also the fork, it is very, very sturdy. We try to boil um, or try to melt um, this one into a cup of hot boiling water and it doesn't work. Why? Because it is dishwasher proof. One of the most important awards that you can win at a trade show is of course the Sustainability Award nowadays. And Bergans of Norway won the Sustainability Award at the ISPO and also at the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards. Well, it's not actually about the backpack itself because this doesn't look real outdoorish. It's about the material that comes from Spinova. But since this one is behind plastic, we'll pop over to the Bergens booth and I will explain you all about the Spinova material. With me is Johannes from Bergens of Norway. Um, he's a product designer and you know everything about Spinova and the cooperation between Spinova and Bergens and this, well, not so outdoorish backpack. Yeah, yeah, it is, um, it is a special, it is a special piece. Um, so Spinova and Bergens, we uh, connected around April last year yeah uh, and it was as brands come and go and corporations come and go it was sort of love at first sight so we very quickly realized that all our values were completely compatible we wanted to do the same thing so it was a really really good match between the between the two companies okay yeah. now what's the material all about so the material is all about it's um, it is a cellulose material. Um, and cellulose means basically wood. In this case, in this case, it means Norwegian spruce. Okay. Um, but it could be so many other things. Like so straw. It could be, could be straw. It could be waste. Um, uh, it could be waste from uh, from food production, like okay. straw. Uh, yeah. It could be rice straw. It could be wheat straw. Um, technically, it could be almost anything that's cellulosic. And that's something that Spinova makes a fiber out. Absolutely. So what they do, is, and what is so unique, is that uh, um, difference to, to viscose, yeah. which is also made from cellulose, um, the Spinova process does not really change the cellulose. It breaks it down, mechanically breaks it okay. down. Okay, yeah. Uh, and what that does is that it's still cellulose. So, um, whereas viscose is synthetic, technically, mm -hmm. um, this is still um, a cellulose. It's classified in the EU as paper. 
<laughs> okay, so yeah. basically this is a paper bag. Paper bag with a little bit of wood. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, the cool thing about this, um, one of the challenges here is that we wanted to make, I mean, there's so little spinover material yet. Yet. Because it's at, very much at the R&D stage. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to, you know, really go all out. We want to investigate everything and just really, really push the boundaries and push the state of the art. So what we did here is that we knew that we wanted to make a product, that we could make a product that was 100% circular. And so it's like the snake biting its own tail. Absolutely. Uh, and the, the cool twist about this is that there are many recycled processes. Uh, and usually what happens is that when you recycle things, you actually downcycle. Yeah. Because the performance usually degrades a little bit every time. During the lifetime yeah. and recycling yeah. ways. Yeah. And then you had to add virgin material. Yeah. Um, so what the interesting thing with this is that, in, at least in the laboratory, which we are very much at this stage, yeah. um, all the tests are showing that with each recycling step, the performance of the material increases. So okay. this is upcycling, which is totally weird. So this is not like we're having the newspaper and in the end we wrap our fish in it. No. It's like we make a quality book out of it. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. this is not like taking textiles and recycling them into um, padding for car seats, you know, yeah. which is downside. Yeah, yeah, to me, yeah, which is yeah. downcycling, yeah. I'm sure yeah. our manufacturers would argue otherwise. No, sure. But, but the cool thing about this can become a jacket, a shirt, I don't know. But for the, the, for the moment, yeah. um, as we've seen the backpack in, yeah. in the ISPO jury and in the uh, Scandinavian Outdoor World jury, we saw this as like a sample what we can expect from for Bergers sure. and yeah. Spinova. But will it ever get to the stage that you get a highly um, technical yeah. jacket out of it yeah. with the logo Bergers of Norway? For sure, yeah. Yeah? yeah. The, the technicality is still at the performance level is still something that we're working on. Uh, but for sure, like a really usable product because this, and I hate to say this, this is not a very good backpack. As backpacks, it's very fashionable. Off. It is very nice, but there are so many like really sure. awesome backpacks yeah. out here showing at this uh, yeah. at this show. So this is not a high performance backpack. This is a baby. Yeah. So it's it it cannot do big things. But with time and with care, this technology will grow and it will become performance, for sure, yeah. Good. And this is about sustainability. Absolutely. Now, you did something yesterday, yeah. which is absolutely awesome. Bergens of Norway actually wrote the Norwegian government a letter that they want to have the four seasons that we have in Europe on the United Nations Protection List. Yeah, UNESCO World UNESCO Heritage List. World Heritage List. Um, and that's something I do totally support. So right now I'm going to sign on the iPad my name that I support this yeah. plan. Yeah. Very important. Everybody can do it. Everybody should do it. Yeah, visit the website, save the seasons. Save the that's all. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for getting us in the right direction. Thank you. Okay, super. Yes, we know that Yeti makes sleeping bags and this is a really big one. Um, it's about four meters long and it will fit six people. But there is a story behind this Yeti. Yeti as a company is a German brand and it's been owned by the Danish Nordisk already for some while. Now for next season, um, the brand name Yeti is going to disappear and it will be known at the Nordisk family as the red Y. That's why it's over here. And that's the logo that you will see for the future. If you are following me already for a while, you might have seen this glove in some of my videos. It's a Hester glove and I use it when I'm chopping wood, I'm doing stuff in the snow, because it's a nice sort of isolated warm hand shoe, but for a lot of different seasons. Now, this one, the leather, it's not chrome free leather. But now Hesta is changing things into the well, better sustainable one. Um, the new collection is built out of a eco queer leather and it's 
leather that is tanned without chrome. So that's a good thing. And what you also should know is that, and it's a big deal at this trade show, that a lot of gloves have got this insert that you can take out. Well, Hestra is doing the liners already for quite a while. Like this. This is the part that gets dirty. You throw it into the washing machine, you wash it, and that makes it fresh again. And if this one gets damaged or it's worn out, you can order a replacement one. And that is sustainable as well. The big news from Gore is Gore-Tex Pro. And as you can see from this moving mannequin, Gore-Tex Pro is really, really flexible. Um, it is also very rugged and very breathable. Now, how this works, I had an interview with one of the Gore specialists. So let's have a look at this right now, um, somewhere outside on this trade show. With me is Mark McKinney. You work for Gore. I do. Let, let, let's not make the mistake you work for Gore-Tex. Um, because a lot of people still think that Gore-Tex is the brand name, but maybe you could explain in short what the difference is between the two. Sure, so Gore is our overall company. Um, it has uh, three divisions, and one of those divisions is our fabrics division, and part of our fabrics is Gore-Tex. So it's our brand name for our fabrics. Okay, now for 2020-21, Gore-Tex Pro. A totally new um, material, for Gore. Could you explain what Gore-Tex Pro is all about? Sure, so Gore-Tex Pro, we're launching three technologies. So we have a totally new membrane, which is Gore-Tex Pro Most Rugged, which is a, as it says on the, the label, it's a more rugged membrane. Um, so extremely rugged. The label? Yeah, yeah, the label. <laughs> extremely rugged, um, highly breathable, and very durable. We also have a Gore-Tex Pro with stretch, which stretches, again, it's in the name. And we're looking at that really durable stretch. And then we have Gore-Tex Pro Most Breathable, um, which maintains our existing um, breathability level, but brings in a new solution dyed backer. And actually, we have a reduced environmental footprint across yeah. all of our products. That's, that's one of the big questions and challenges for the whole Gore company, I think, at the moment. Um, because we know about the membrane, and you're working with that. Well, there was a statement a while ago that you were going to change the membrane from PTV to something else. So Gore has a, a published environmental policy. Yeah. We have many membranes. Yeah. Um, some of those are looking at um, immediately a reduced environmental footprint. Yeah. And, and those tend to be used in lighter end uses. So we have a um, policy which marks out which membrane or which technology will move when. Okay. And our plan is for Gore-Tex Pro that we're working on just now. For 2023, we would have a new membrane technology with a reduced environmental footprint okay. at a membrane level. But for our message for 20, we can change the environmental footprint of all of our textiles. And that's no, what no, no, we've no. done. Okay. I was not suggesting that um, you need to do it because of environmental issues. It's more like, uh, I'm the guy who says that sustainable is also being durable. Sure. And uh, I know Gore products are durable. So, in my opinion, you don't always have to change everything sure. if it's a durable, long-lasting product. Yeah. Um, now, in to regard to the new Gore-Tex Pro, it should be rugged, so it should be very durable. Mm -hmm. How did you test it? So, that's a great question. We tested it within our laboratories. So we had, for our most rugged, we have what we called a five finger scratch tester, which is a- That's the one that's used in the car industry. Absolutely, it comes in the car industry, yeah. it tests plastics. Um, from an, I'm an engineer, I love it. Okay. Because <laughs> it's really arduous and, and it just rips up everything. Yeah. And, and we were able to measure and see where could we make performance improvements on that durability. Yeah. But we then took that lab test and we tested it also in the field. So we used it with our athletes, um, we used it with our pro um, testers. So these are men and women who are in the mountains more than 100 days a year. Uh, you know, they're out there day in, day out in yeah. the worst weather. So mountain guides, um, avalanche teams, they were using it for several years. Now, I've got the same jacket as you have. Okay with the stretch panels in it. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm surprised about the amount of stretch um, because of sample size mice is a little bit on the biggish side because I'm a small guy and quite narrow. Um, how much stretch, stretch is actually in um, the construction of the membrane laminate? So we've compressed the laminate by 20%. So that allows 20% elongation under force. Yeah, but that means that the membrane itself, it is compressed as well? Absolutely. So we've taken the face, the membrane and the backer in a relaxed state, let's call yeah. it that. So they are um, produced in a balanced way and then we ensure that that's compressed to give us that 20% of stretch in use. And now let's be nerdy. Um, if we talk about stretch, I talk about elastibands the whole time. Mm -hmm. When you have an elastiband and you stretch it, it's still, well, compressed in the middle between your fingers, so yep. that's the full thickness. Yep. When you stretch it, it gets thinner. Um, this is the same way how the Gore-Tex Pro works? So it's actually the reverse. So when you, if you take, if I take your analogy of the elastic band, yeah. if we stretch it, the piece in the middle, so you stretch it 20%, the piece in the middle will then become a normal Gore-Tex Pro most rugged laminate yeah. with a 40 denier face, a most rugged film and a regular backer. And so it would be at its normal level when it's 100%. When it's so in that, that way it's more like a harmonica construction than, than an elastic band. Absolutely. Okay. Um, now you have the breathability numbers. Mm -hmm. What is it on the Gore-Tex Pro? So it depends very on much the on the technology. Yeah, of course. So for our uh, Gore-Tex Pro most breathable, yeah. we're getting down to an RET level of three yeah. on those lighter faces. We have a 30 denier face that's new for the launch. So playing the rip in 30 denier, that allows the, um, the minimum resistance of breathability through the textile. Yeah. So, so that gives us our best number. Um, so our most breathable uses our lightest and our midweight faces mm -hmm. and our most rugged uses our midweight and our heavyweight faces. So even our most rugged membrane with our heaviest faces are still in the highly breathable range. So the, the range of scale. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. go from RET of three yeah. and then we'll be up to an RET in the region of seven or eight Okay. for um, one that's focusing on ruggedness rather than breathability. Now there's also a big uh, thing going on in sustainability and how you make the uh, materials itself. Mm -hmm. You told me something about dyeing. What is the way how the face fabric is dyed? So with our faces we have multiple options on dyeing methods for the faces but also for the backers. So within the industry, most of the textiles go through a jet dyeing process, so a bath dye. Yeah, so it, it, so it gets basically coated on the outside. Absolutely. Like what you explained in the press conferences with, what's the thing called in English? A radish. A radish. <laughs> radish in Nederlands. <laughs> Indeed. Radish. Um, so that one is purple on the outside, pink purple, and Absolutely. it's white on the inside. So Correct. that's the way how it's normally done. Absolutely. How do you do it? So. We're using solution dyed, also known as dope dyeing, and we add colour pellets while the nylon is still at a, a pellet stage. Yeah. So before it's extruded into yarn. So when it's extruded into yarn under temperature and pressure, yeah. the colour goes all the way through it. And so that's when we think of it as being a carrot. You yeah, it like through the it's middle. orange all the way. It's orange yeah. all the way, absolutely. So that uses that solution dyeing technology uses less water and less energy. We use it in our backer face, in yeah. our backer textiles but also in our face textiles. So that gives us a reduced environmental footprint wherever it's used. So for it, There's a, a, a reduced amount of water that's being used as well? Absolutely. So a lot. Reduced water and reduced energy. Comparably we see about a 47% reduction. Okay in, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot, that's a lot. It um, helps. If we talk about water, one of the big questions I always get is like, how do I take care of my gear? And there seems to be a sort of thinking that you cannot wash Gore-Tex gear, please. 
I know it's rubbish because you can wash it. I do can. it not all the time, but I do it when I need it. Yes. Just to get it more oh, well, longevity extended. Um, what's your point of view on this? So, uh, so that's a great question. Fundamentally, washing your gear, if done properly, will make it last longer. Um, you get the dirt, the sweat. The, if you think about the dirt going into the, the textiles, that's just a braiding. Yeah. So, so you want it to be clean. Yeah. Um, getting, you know, washing those um, sweat contaminants, those body oils and fluids, getting them out of your garments. That's not just an odor issue. That's just an, <laughs> yeah. an all right it performance. It happens. <laughs> it happens to us all. Yeah. Um, it's just better for the garment because you're allowing the pores to be empty, open, allow breathability, allow moisture vapor transfer. Yeah. So we have some really clear washing instructions. Um, I can't tell anybody wash at a set time period because we're all different. Yeah. I certainly wash my garments regularly um, and it depends on the end use. So if you think your garment is looking dirty or it's just a bit grimy, yeah. follow the instructions and make sure the pockets are empty, zip it up. <laughs> take your phone out. <laughs> take your phone out, uh, don't put in your lip balm or, yeah, or nothing that. like that. That's follow a good waterproofing though. <laughs> Yeah, not so good for jackets. <laughs> no. Um, so, so follow the instructions yeah. and it's on the web and yeah, you, your garment That's will last you longer. Know. And of course, if the garment lasts longer... You're sustainable. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Sometimes it's actually nice to see what I'm doing for the Espo jury and uh, to see my name below, well, basically the statement that I wrote on behalf of the jury meeting. Um, the product of the year in the category outdoor hardware it is the approach gear and they call it a smart safety tool and actually it is pretty smart because it does something that well some other uh, emergency tools do as well like sending sms's that kind of stuff uh, staying in contact with home let friends know wherever you are but it does one thing that to our opinion nobody else does um, there is a acceleration measurement device inside this one and when you crash for example on your skis or with your mountain bike or maybe turn over in a boat at full seas uh, at high seas it will send out automatically a SOS to the emergency services and that reduces the response time quite dramatically so in that respect I think it totally deserves to be the products of the year my sweet colleagues, they're all here. Winner of the Gold ISPO Award in the category um, sleeping bags and mattresses is the Marmot Warm Cube Gallatin 20. Um, about the sleeping bag itself, we will talk later at the Marmot booth. But when we were testing this sleeping bag during the ISPO Experience Day, there was one thing that all the journalists noticed, and that's the zipper. Um, because when I open the zipper and close it, open and close it, the fabric behind it, it doesn't snag and that happens with quite a lot of zippers. Now we thought this was a totally new zipper, um, but earlier today I discovered at the YKK stand or the booth that this is not the case and I actually came in full contact with just this very little part. This is YKK, this is a really big zipper. And the secret behind the nice system is this very small part. And now I will have to zoom in, but this small part actually prevents the fabric from snagging into the zipper. The most fun at the jury experience day from Mispo we had was basically this boot. Um, the Saleba Mountain Trainer, two winter Gore-Tex. This one is a male version. Um, one of us was wearing it and when we went up into the snow it was perfectly all right. But then we went down where the snow was melting a bit and we came across this, well, this muddy terrain. And what happened? We went well, almost into knee deep with the shoes into the mud. That's why they are dirty. So with ISPO jury meeting, we test them as well. Um, resulting into a gold winner for Saleva uh, in the category footwear. With me is Debbie Reed. Um, Explain your function because I read your business card and it says like sustainable officer manager. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's com it can be complicated. So I'm corporate responsibility manager for Equip Outdoor Technologies. Equip Outdoor Technologies own both the RAB brand, so I'm modeling here, and Low Alpine. Uh, and uh, Low Alpine brand. is the backpack. Uh, we mainly know this from the backpacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I've been reviewing quite a lot of gear from Rap and Low Alpine as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I always seem to have a sort of complaint about the fact that you are not being as sustainable as I think you could be yeah. in regard to other companies. But I know from the Dutch distributor that you've been behind the screens, not telling anybody, working hard on yeah. getting more sustainable. Yeah. Explain this to me. Yeah, yeah. so um, we have been quiet, uh, that's for sure. But sustainability has always been core to what we've done. Yeah. Our products are always developed with longevity in mind. They're repairable, they're washable. We've always made high quality technical equipment to last, which probably is the main thing we can do to develop a sustainable product. So it's always been there. What we've done over the last couple of years is really looked at what's going to be right for us and our brands. Mm -hmm. And this is a great example. This is the new Microlite, which is released this autumn, winter 20. Yeah. Uh, this is a recycled outer and a recycled liner. But what we're really excited about is it's got recycled down in there. So recycled down is coming from post-consumer waste. So it's, it's bedding, which so, is taken, treated, yeah. cleaned, treated again with Nick Wax to make the, the water repellency work for it. Put in these products, it's the same quality as Virgin Down, it's saving us using a virgin material, and it's saving a waste product going to landfill. It's, it's a great idea. And, and, and it's not mixed with new virgin materials? Nope, it is 100% and, and it recycled still gives down. this isolation value that you want to have to yeah. product? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great, and it, it's the same quality. You wouldn't know the difference other than we'll have a label on it that says recycled. Oh, but that's the cool <laughs> thing about being, you know, sustainability. Um, there's no compromise. You want it to work for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it doesn't need to be yeah. different in that yeah. respect. You don't have to see it. Yeah. It's better knowing it. Well, we tested it in the, this is the Horizon Down hoodie here. That's the one that's on sale now already. So this is on sale now. So yeah. we tested it out in this, um, on sale this autumn, winter. It's gone so well that we've now taken the leap and we've put it in our most iconic okay. product, one of our biggest ranges. Um, we think it's the right thing to do. It's the right, it's the right solution for us. But now this is down winter. Uh, how does this relate to, well, let's say hard shells, soft shells that are for summer? Are you doing the, the sustainability thing there as well? Yeah, we've got um, recycled materials going in wherever we can now. We're marking them up by um, on the, the labels. We're now putting a recyclable or a sustainable icon on the yeah. labels, which will tell consumers. Um, we're not going for big green logos and worlds and leaves. For us, this is about a technical product that yeah. still delivers technical value, but also has sustainability credentials. So you'll find that marked more and more in our products moving forward. You mentioned it earlier, uh, longevity. Mm -hmm. uh, longevity means that you have to take care of your products. Uh -huh. Now, I see in the labels all the time that you work together with Nick Wax. Yeah, we do. Tell me why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the Rab brand, many of you I'm sure know, developed with Rab Carrington, a British mountaineer. Rab has had a long relationship with yeah. Nick Wax. He's worked with the brand for a very long time, another great British brand, a lot like Rab. And we've continued that partnership ongoing. We don't see any reason to change it. They develop great quality product that suits what we do. So we just continue to work with them and offer that as a advice to consumers as well. So you notice a big difference between washing, for example, a hard shell with a regular detergent or with a product from Nick Wax? Yeah, for us, we know the research that Nick Wax has put into developing a product yeah. that will keep you know, we all value our outdoor kit. It, it has a tough life. You know, it gets all sorts of grit and grime and sweat and water on it. We know that what Nick Wax do can take that, clean it, and keep it back out in as good quality as we would hope it to be. Okay, this is what Nick Wax sort of told me already, but like, that's Nick Wax, and I like to hear it from somebody else. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm asking. Yeah. Okay, washing, that's one thing. Uh -huh. um, but then, I treat my stuff with a Nick Wax afterwards as well to get the DWR coat back on it again. Yep. Um, how does the new products, the sustainable ones, what kind of DWR do you use? Yeah, so we all recognize the issues around some of the coatings that are used, the fluorocarbons that are used, and the issues that they perceive to have with the environment. We are trying really hard to remove them where we don't need them. So on non-technical products, so things like linings, um, we're taking DWR um, fluorocarbon coatings off and we're yeah. replacing them with C6 or fluorocarbon-free solutions. Yeah. 
we are doing that in the non-technical parts of our products. Where our products are highly technical, we still are using a coating that has a fluorocarbon, free, uh, fluorocarbon solution in until we can develop a solution that we think will give you the right protection um, and protect the material well enough. Yeah. Once we've got that solution in place, we will change. But at the moment, we're not happy enough with the solutions that we're seeing. So technical, highly technical materials will still have a coating on, but all the non-technical... Because you want your we need high those technical products spell to, to work. work. Yeah. If okay. they don't yeah. work, you will end up not using that product and buying something else, which is going to have a bigger environmental impact. That's not sustainable at all. Not no, getting those products I totally, right. I totally yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, there's one thing that's over there which you want to talk about as well, the red one. I have. We've got the red one here. So this is um, it's very similar to the Microlite. This is the Cirrus HL, which stands for High Loft. Yeah. So this is similar to the Microlite, and it's a recycled outer, recycled liner, but this has got a recycled insulation made from post-consumer waste, which is PET plastic Which bottles. is not down in this not case. Not down in this one. So um, if, you, if you're someone who doesn't want to use down, this gives you that alternative and uh, another great way of using up a waste product. But you're not going to lab it, label it vegan? vegan? No, <laughs> uh, no, we're not. We're not. <laughs> because no. I see some brands doing this because it's totally made out of plastic. All of a sudden, it starts to be vegan. Yeah, no, we're not. We're, when people ask us that question, we can now give them three options. So if you want to buy down, we've got all our down is responsibly sourced and it's available. So we, there's high welfare standards. We've now got the recycled down in there. So if you're concerned about carbon and waste, we can now offer recycled down. Yeah, if yeah. you don't want an animal product, you can buy this synthetic product. And this one, as I say, is actually a, a recycled synthetic. Um, what we're not doing is offering it as a vegan product. We'll let people make their own choice about that. It's like not being labeling everything. Big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. No problem, it's great okay. to talk. <laughs> Wrap to Lower Alpine. Here we are. I don't have to explain who you are anymore, so that's a good thing. Um, what's new for Lower Alpine, not only on the product, but also, again, on the sustainability part? Yeah, so similar to what we talked about over there, this is part of a long-term change for us to just get more sustainability within our products. Again, with Lower Alpine, we've always built great products, built to last, repairable. You, you know, there are, the most important thing is longevity of product. Yeah. What we're now doing is integrating that with things like recycled fabrics. So this is entirely recycled fabric. This is our spring summer 20. So you'll see this out pretty soon, the halo. And um, moving through into autumn, winter 20, we've got a, a range now. So this is the Pioneer. We've got the Kletter Sack. Again, recycled fabrics. Um, they're also, we're moving into fluorocarbon free. So we okay. touched on that a little bit around yeah. the corner. For us, for low alpine, every fabric that we now purchase from the end of last year is fluorocarbon free. Now what we're not doing is suddenly stopping production and swapping to fluorocarbon free. Mm -hmm. That would mean an awful lot of fabric waste. Yeah. We, you know, there's an environmental impact of that. So we're doing inline changes on a lot of our ranges. So you'll start to see that fluorocarbon free fabric coming through in a lot of our existing ranges. But for new ranges like this, we're building it into the product from the So go. when will you run out of existing fabric and be totally into new fabric? It so varies range by range, but we're hoping by autumn, winter 20, the majority will be fluorocarbon free. And um, the halo? Yes, halo. What's the purpose of it? Is it a commuting city pack? Yeah, so it's, it's for anything really. I mean, it's certainly commuting city. It's got an opportunity to put a laptop in there. Um, it's a great, this is what I actually bought to come to the show with. Okay. So it's great, you know, there's enough space in there to put everything you need for a couple of days away. Um, it's, it's a real all round city pack that you can use. And you know, you can just see from the images we've got that go with it. It's used for sort of all yeah. occasions really. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. With me is Marmot Malcolm, like I like to call you. Yes, that um, works. <laughs> you're a product manager at Marmot. Yes. And well, Warm Cube. Warm Cube. You won two ISPO awards. We have. Um, yes. I was not on this one. I was on the one with the sleeping bag, so I know the reason behind this one. Okay. But please explain, well, basically the whole structure of or the idea of Warm Cube. Okay, so uh, last Dispo we also won uh, another Warm Cube award. Yeah. Um, with our West Rib Parker, which was a big, heavy, uh, solid winter alpine type jacket. So this year we've brought out the Warm Cube featherless hoodie. So not quite so warm, but much more suitable for all sorts of different people and a wider range of activities. Yeah. So you've got synthetic insulation 
all over the body, but what really boosts it is the, the, the cubes, the warm cubes filled with featherless insulation. So the cubes stop the extra insulation from moving around and redistributing and getting cold spots. Um, and also it allows for uh, greater clearance of humidity and dampness in your jacket. So winter activities, often cold, wet, but damp. So this jacket is the perfect companion for cold, wet winter activities. Just to make sure, this one is inside out, of course. Huh? Uh, yeah, for sure. This one's because otherwise out. I will yes. get some people saying. <laughs> now, I know in the video that I did uh, the last time that I made a remark on the cubes, yep. like this would be super into sleeping bags. Yes. Probably a lot more people said it. So, so this is what we got for the s jury meeting. Yes. So here we have a slightly different concept because we have down and synthetic insulation. Yeah. So again, winter activities are often quite damp. So this sleeping bag is synthetic in terms of its base construction. So synthetic throughout and in the base mm -hmm. of the sleeping bag. But what really gives you the boost of warmth, if we just put that over our mannequin for a moment, is really big down filled warm cubes here. So what we've done is we've boosted the warmth performance of the synthetic bag with the down cubes. And it's okay on this because these are deep within your sleeping system, mm -hmm. so the down is gonna perform great. Um, no down in the base because that's where you sleep and crush the insulation, so yeah. the synthetic works much, be better. Works yeah. much better. Um, and in testing, what we found as well is that this sleeping bag construction uh, the user will warm up more quickly. So when you get into your sleeping bag, you okay. put the tent up, you yep. get into your bivy, the temperature in the sleeping bag warms up more quickly with warm cube than a regular bag. Okay. So it's a real bonus and a real boost for the and, uh, Let's have a look camper. at the foot box. Yes. Because. So. Here we got the bigger cubes, basically. Yes, even bigger. So warm cube in the foot box and, it, and in the torso. So zoned insulation to boost it where you really want it. Is that going to be a unisex model or is it going to be like ladies and women separate? Are so different? this would be a, a unisex model. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And, um, and we've also in the line planned uh, an expedition version. So if you can imagine someone uh, doing sort of Arctic or Northern Scandinavia type Nordic backcountry yeah. touring, then we've got an even warmer one for them. I'm really curious what you're going to do next year. Yeah, well, <laughs> me too. We'll, see, we'll okay. see what happens. Thanks so much, Malcolm. No, thank you. Super. Okay, the Kenken backpack from Fjell Raven, we all know. Um, but special for coming season is the fact that it is also made in wool, or some partly wool. And the nice thing about this wool is this is also wool that has been basically recycled. This is not the first life of their wool. Um, and of course, the wool from Fjell Raven, they do their own production. Um, it is from Mulesing Free Sheep. And Mulesing Free Sheep, Free. If you don't know what it means, it means basically that the part behind the anus, where some wrinkles are, is not cut away. This is very harmful for animals. Um, so they keep the sheep in a very natural uh, environment and don't do any harm to them. Um, that is the news on Fjell Raven and wool. And they make a big collection. It's not only about the Kenken, but it's also about really nice, just normal sweaters. Now let's go on to the down part in Fjell Raven. Okay, okay. I told you I was. Okay, I told you I was going to talk about down. Well, this is the original 1974 down expedition jacket from Fjell Raven. Um, it's a famous jacket, and well, this is of course not the one from that age. It's a retro one, um, but from this jacket, and this is the large. I'm actually a S. That's why it looks so big. They made a whole new collection. So there's a short lightweight version of it. And there is also a longer version model of it. And what you should know is that Fjell Raven doesn't use any PFCs in the durable water repellent coating. And they use their own down standard for the down filling, of course. Um, that means no life picking and everything that comes to harm for the animals. So that is a nice thing with Fjell Raven again. And from the real heavyweight down expedition jacket, we go to something more urban, which is the new Fardach collection. Um, let's say the crossover between normal city use and light outdoor use. Fardach collection, a like nice anorak, and I love anorak, so check that out when they come to shop in the fall. When I'm talking about ISPO, um, I always mention the word winter, but it's not about winter because there seems to be fall winter as well. So for the fall season, we've got these shoes. It's the new Loa Everyday 
collection. Um, and why is this full? Well, because there is a Gore-Tex liner on the inside, uh, so that makes it waterproof and breathable. So this is sort of a outdoor urban shoe. Um, and what I do like is not only the looks of the camouflage print, but also the denim one, but this one, a loader one. It's a polyester one. It's not for sale everywhere, but I really think this is a very fancy outdoor urban shoe. With me is Lyndon from Patagonia. Lyndon, what's, what's your function at Patagonia Company? I manage the Alpine product line, so that's the, much of our lightweight insulation and our climbing gear. So that means the Nano Puff. It means the Nano Puff. It's, it's been around life. since 2009, um, and you're always very into sustainability. Correct. Uh, explain me how sustainability, Patagonia, and the Nano Puff come together. This season is really exciting because the Nano Puff, as you said, has been around for the better part of a decade. It's really been this icon as a lightweight insulation piece. And since we introduced it, we've been trying to think about how we can use this product to make a more impactful supply chain. So we originally introduced it, we moved it into recycled materials. Yeah. Then we spent a lot of time looking at the fit and the pattern so that we could use less material to actually build the same garment. And then for the past few years, we've been looking at how to rebuild this insulation and make this insulation the exact same insulation, but through a whole new method of production. And for a consumer, uh, we never see production, to be honest. Yep. Uh, I do sometimes, but <laughs> the normal consumer doesn't. And what is it, what, what, where does the changes happen? What's the big difference between all the methods and how you do it now? So that's the exciting part. Is for the consumer, this is the same product that we've known and loved. Yeah. It's, it hasn't changed at all. But what's changed is how we build this insulation. So we've been working with our partners at Primaloft to okay. take their top yeah. tier insulation, their Primaloft Gold Eco, yeah. and figure out new ways to construct it, that, construct it that uses less energy. So in the past, we've had to create these insulations, send them through these pretty energy intensive production pro processes yeah. to create the insulation. And over the past few years, we've been working to build that same insulation but without that massive energy input. Are we getting to a CO2 zero emission jacket by now? We're getting closer. We're getting closer. You know, we've been able to cut the insulation, the amount of carbon that goes into building this insulation yeah. by nearly half just this year. So from last year to this year, the amount of carbon that goes into creating the insulation for the Nano Puff has been cut in half. So baby steps. So, but it means that the closer you get, let's say the final step is going to be harder and harder and harder. It always it's is. like reaching the, the summit basically. Of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much for this. Of course. Okay. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a, remind, I'm a remind me how you're going to do this. I'm a motorcycle. Okay. Um, how are we going to do this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. This is Jess from <laughs> Patagonia. Um, we just talked to your colleague. Yep. Lyndon. Lyndon. Um, now, this is somewhat sort of similar to a jacket that I wear oh. a lot of times. Nice, soft, cuddly. What is it? Um, this is our R1 Air. So R1 Air is a new fleece that we have in our technical lineup of fleece. Yeah. So you probably have the R1, maybe? No, it's from a different brand. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we have the R1 that's been in the line for a long time. Yeah. Um, and our, this is our new R1 Air, so it's much more breathable. Um, it's also 100% recycled. So using 100% recycled materials from the binding, the pocket, to the fabric. Um, and it's gonna be a lot more breathable, uh, still keep you super warm, Yeah. but be a great piece of those high output days. So. so this has got a running vest on it, trail running stuff. Yes. What kind of activities do you use this for? Awesome, so I'm a runner myself, so yeah. a big trail runner. Um, I'll use this for trail running if it's really cold. Um, otherwise it's perfect so for- Temperature wise? Uh, I would say What's below 30, but for you guys it would be. Oh, we have to real calculate, yeah. put this in. Negative zero, two? something yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> something like that. Um, so I would wear it for really cold days running. Otherwise, it's perfect for backcountry ski touring, uh, great for mountain biking in cold weather, really anything on the mountain when you're really moving and starting to heat up. So. How packable is it? I wish I could take it off. Um, I'd say it packs down pretty well. Yeah. Um, so because of this texture, it's not as bulky. So it's pretty lightweight compared to most fleece. Um, so we're able to kind of pull out some of that fabric and fiber to really allow it to be quite packable for your, your day um, on the mountain. And if we're talking um, sort of soft fabrics, yep. we're talking also a little bit about microplastics. Yes. How is this? So 
So, um, definitely something we're still working on as a brand with Patagonia um, yeah. to help get rid of microplastics. The big thing we're tackling here is um, helping to reduce what's going in the landfill. So, because this is 100% recycled polyester, it also can be broken down and recycled at its end of life. So, not quite microplastic story, but something we're still working okay. on. Um, super durable, so you're not getting as much of that high pile so coming it's, off. So, it's like what? It's not quite, it's not the microplastic story yet from us. We're working on that, yeah. but this is um, fully But you're a very sustainable percent. brand anyway. Yes, uh, yes. You do a lot of efforts. Um, I'm working on it for And sure. with this kind of cuddly feeling, <laughs> you will keep this forever. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, of course. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> when you've seen my video that I made from the ISPAN, some of you might have heard the news about the banks and that there's a lot of changes going on. Well, for the winter they got the Banks Winter GTX and that is a totally new shoe. And what I do like about it, that's, it's not only leather, but there is also a wool mixture on top, which makes it look sort of quite modern. And on the inside, which is also really nice, and I'll have to take this one out. Um, the insole, of course, it's a woolen liner, which is nice for moisture absorption. And on the other side, it's the same. And you might see it in between, it might reflect a little bit. Um, there is a aluminium layer in it. And what they just told me is that the aluminium layer is just like a rescue blanket. So it's one solid structure. Well, what I would suggest to Hanbach is maybe you should put some perforation in it so that you can lose some moisture to the underneath part as well. Um, but that's something for them to think about. Now let's head over to the other side because they got some more news for city dwellers. Like I mentioned, for the city dwellers, Hanbach got the Arayo and the Tolva Mid. Um, yes, both in Gore-Tex, so they are waterproof. And also this is a winter shoe. A um, little bit different, again, you see the wool, which is also a polyester mix, but underneath, this is a normal rubber outsole. With the new Banks Winter, there is a Hanbach ice grip sole, of course, for real protection on slippery surfaces. So this one for the city dwellers, and that one if you don't want to get slippery. Okay, with me is Gons. He is actually the owner of Klettermussen. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as you know, I won the ISPO award jury meeting, and we had this pack, and we awarded it. Thank now you, this one is, Thank you. well you did it yourself, so this is a white one, looks beautiful, but this one is filled with air. Now let's go to the more serious pack. Can I hand this over to you? Gons, could you explain it to me? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the, uh, the beauties of this pack is that we really were trying to make something as lightweight as possible with volume to grow if you need to carry lots of stuff but one of the issues is also when you put or you take off the stuff you're carrying you're using it the pack all of a sudden if it's big volume it becomes quite uh, difficult to carry yeah so we worked a lot on the okay first of all how can you quickly access things that are pointy and difficult we reinforced all the back the bottom yeah to be able to put the crampons the ice axes without having to worry about hurting the surface fabric because the surface fabric we were also thinking about lightweight and making it as light as possible so we kept this very very light fabric. so what is actually the weight of the pack by itself uh, I'm glad you asked that uh, it's about 900 grams for the so that's yeah. pretty light yeah for okay. a heavy-duty backpack yeah. like this yeah, yeah we think so too okay Let's continue yeah. with the features, like the rope yeah. attachment. The rope attachment for us was really important. We really wanted to be able to throw the rope on top. Yeah. I mean, a, a big part of this backpack is really designed for professionals, so alpine guides especially. If you throw in the rope, you're going to carry lots of gear for your clients in case they need it. But then you also need to hold the rope tight. We created this compression system, yeah. which we thought was actually quite quite smart way of being able to both hold the rope but also when the, the backpack is lighter you can also compress it really really tight and still carry it very close to your body. One of the things that I liked is the, the way the shoulder straps go because yeah. they're pretty curved yeah. uh, but also the strap between the chest strap how that is constructed I really liked it a lot and also this feature because I don't know any backpack who does it in this way because it's so easy to lift it yeah. instead of on the top where it goes like wink. It's a workhorse. This is really that's meant a to good be, word. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a meant workhorse. to be totally. You know, we you can't make a full backpack from this kind of material from the the, the coat, yeah. But if you want to 
a perfect balance of functionality, lights, and also sustainability, of course, from yeah. the materials. Yeah, we thought we we stroke a very nice. But now you say sustainability. Yeah. Is this one made from the sort of same material that I have my old shopping bag from Glatemusen that was made from fishing nets? Yeah. It's funny you asked that because actually we we still work with recycled polyamide. Yeah. It's the same kind of dernier, it's the same kind of supplier, but yeah, the world sometimes you know you don't run you run out of fishing nets or you have other kind of things. So yeah, we like saying it's recycled polyamide, post industry, yeah. post consumer. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, it maybe it's not so catchy from a marketing point of view, but the functionality is there. That's what Classic is it. about, yeah, isn't exactly. it? Thank you so yeah, much. Pleasure to meet you. Okay, Thank good. you. And thanks for the award. <laughs> You're <again>. welcome. <laughs> so, I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please give it a like and leave a comment below. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email, a DM, or just call me. Um, you know, I'm an independent blogger, vlogger, reviewer. I do this 100% independent. Um, so, if you like what I do, please support me. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, like my Facebook page, and follow me on Instagram and if you do many 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 thanks in advance and if you subscribe to YouTube don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video one sort of interesting figure um, I've been doing some mathematics and I came up to 3,000 no 39 1,399 steps that I did in three days on ISMO. So I'm pretty tired. Now I'm driving home eight hours and I'll sleep again in my own bed. See you next time. Ciao. Enjoy the outdoors.